Hi, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to show you five ways that you can measure the success of your SharePoint intranet rollout. The first way to do this is by using page analytics. Now, this is a feature which is available on every single SharePoint page, so you can be really specific about which page you're interested in. So let's take a look. So every single page inside of SharePoint has this analytics button here. Um, so this is actually going to be the analytics of this intranet homepage, which is the best place to start off with when you're considering the success um, rates of your um, new SharePoint intranet. So when you click on this analytics button, it's going to show you the page analytics. It will show you the page views in the last 7, 30 or 90 days. Um, and it will also show you a trend from last week to see if it's going up. Now, obviously, if the if your measurements of success is based on page views, you want to see a trend of this going up over a period of time. So you can see here it's up 120% since last week. We can also see the average time spent per user. And again, we can see that in 7, 30 or 90 days. And essentially, we want to be seeing this going up. Now, you might want to um, make some uh, almost like key point indicators type um, measurements internally based on the amount of uh, users of the system um, and plot out a bit of a trend of how you think this is going to grow and you, then you can use methods in the future of trying to bring more people into your intranet and watch these page analytics grow. The other cool thing I like about this is that you can also see the page traffic by time and again, you can view this in the last 7, 30 or 90 days. And that will show you uh, not only by average of the days, but also the time of day that people are looking at this. And that will give you some really good insights as well about how people are interacting with your intranet. Is it something that they're interacting with in the morning um, or maybe at lunchtime or late afternoon? And then you can tailor the experience a little bit around that. So if you know, for example, that you can see there's high traffic of people coming through to this intranet first thing in the morning, then maybe you start tailoring some of the imagery to include things like cups of coffee and things like that within the imagery because subliminally people are going to resonate with that a little bit better. The next way we can check uh, or measure the success of our internet is to see how much of the content is actually being used. So how many documents are being added to some of the departmental areas that we're creating in our SharePoint intranet. So going back into my intranet here, I'm going to go into one of my department sites, let's say for example finance, and then within here I'm going to click on the cog across the top, click on site content, which is going to show me all the content of this site. I can then see the documents uh, in here and I can see how many documents have been created and when they were last modified. So this gives me a good indication of is it being used. Now this isn't something obviously that you would do straight after the launch of your intranet, but maybe it's something that you periodically check every month to see are documents being added, are they being used, are they being updated, are people actually using this system. The same goes as well for pages. So if we go back onto the cog, click on site contents, you should see that the um, page library is also going up because this will contain the news items. So if this page library is going up, then it's obviously being used and content is being created. Same goes with events. This is the events web part and where it's holding the events. So if more events are being added, then obviously this site is currently being used. You'll also see from in here, you've got site usage, which is the specific site dashboard usage. So what we were looking at before was the page analytics. So that is specific per page, but this is the overall site usage. So we can see the unique viewers, the site visits, as well as average time spent per user on this. We could also see popular content in the last seven days. So these are gonna be the unique views uh, and on the news posts as well, as well as any documents. Now this site doesn't have much content on it, so it's not gonna show as much. Um, but we can also see by device. So this is again, really useful to know, are people accessing this via desktop, via mobile phone? Because although there is a native SharePoint app that you can use on your or mobile phone to access the internet, um, it, it's worth considering tailoring your internet if that is predominantly what people are accessing it through. Because it's going to be, a slightly different experience um, whether you're using desktop or mobile phone so knowing this is really useful again we can see by uh, the, the time of day um, and you can see here it's recommended that Monday at 7 a.m. is when most people have accessed your SharePoint site in the past 12 weeks so it's giving you useful insights straight away 
You can also see shared with external users. So you can run a report to see the content that's been shared externally as well from here. So some really great site usage analytics coming from this. So a quick reminder, please subscribe to the channel. Um, subscriptions really help us grow. Um, and if you've got any questions uh, about anything so far, please use the comments feed below. So the next thing then, the next way you could possibly measure the success of your internet rollout is, are you getting reduced amounts of support queries coming in? Or are you getting increased amounts of support queries coming in? Now, if you've built out uh, your SharePoint sites or department sites with FAQs, you should be noticing that the amount of inbound queries are starting to reduce. For example, back on my finance department site homepage, we've put in some FAQs. If I scroll to the bottom about how to, um, maybe it's about how to request something or what to do if something's broken or something like that. But these FAQs should be helping reduce the amount of inbound queries that a particular department's getting. You can measure this quite easily with IT support requests as well. So if you've set up an IT department site um, and hopefully that will be uh, reducing some of those queries as well. Another way of measuring success um, is to use uh, or, or build a case of user story tests. So by this, I mean, um, set up an Excel spreadsheet uh, in which you've got multiple columns and the first column should say as a, and then that's where you put your kind of role, say um, as a, um, uh, say for example, uh, end user, I want, and the next column say, I want to, and then maybe say, find policies. And then the next column say, because um, I'm interested to know what uh, our expense request policy is, for example. So once you've set up those tests, you can then get a group of pilot users to actually run through those uh, particular tests to see how easy it is for them to find policies. So in this case, uh, my users might come on to here, they might use a search bar, or they might come down and say, oh, okay, policies, click through to that, that opens up the policies library, and then they can navigate through and go, oh, okay, I found the expense request policy. So that gives a tick in the box, say, yes, that was successful. Whereas if they weren't able to do that, then potentially that could be used as a measurement of that it wasn't successful. And then finally, um, another measurement of success could be a feedback form. Now the feedback form could be embedded directly into the SharePoint homepage if you wanted to, but that could take up a lot of room. You can create Microsoft Forms that embed directly into SharePoint pages, or I would suggest that you create a call to action, um, which is just a simple web part that you add in. You can change the background image, you can change the text to say something like, what do you think of the new intranet hub? Uh, with a button which, which says click here to let us know. And maybe that can either open a Microsoft form um, or it could even open up an email directly to a shared mailbox, which you're picking up and looking at. And this is a great way to get kind of feedback because if it's not a success, you'll get a lot of people saying, I can't find this. Um, this isn't easy to use, blah, 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 blah. Um, but hopefully if it is successful, either you won't get get any kind of feedback because no news is typically good news or in the best case scenario you're getting a load of great feedback from people which you can then use to highlight say this is why it's so good and you can spotlight that maybe even create a couple of news articles which is using some of that great feedback to promote how much of a great success the rollout of the SharePoint internet has been. I hope you found this video about uh, measuring the success of your SharePoint internet rollout useful. Um, if you did please subscribe to the channel um, and like the video. If you've got any thoughts or comments or questions, please use the comment box below. And thank you very much for your time for watching the video.